Do you know what pure joy looks like? I will show you. It looks like this. This is a face of pure joy. Google keeps on winning. So Google was in some hot water with the US legal system due to some alleged non-competitive practices, but a lot of those things have been thrown out. A lot of people fear that they would have to lose Chrome to divest it from their main sort of company. There was a number of companies, I think OpenAI was one of them, that actually said that they might buy Chrome if it became available for sale. But the judge won't require Chrome to be divested and chastised the Justice Department for asking for Chrome's divestiture. So not only is it not being divested, the judge was like, don't you do that again? Don't you mess with Google? Google's stock jumps 8% because it avoided kind of like the worst case scenario, the worst case of penalties in this antitrust case. So Google pays Apple billions of dollars per year to be the default search engine on iPhones. That can continue to go on. So it looks like that deal has not been struck down. So that means that Google is happy. Apple is happy. Google is barred from entering into exclusive contracts for distributing its search engine and the judge ruled that Google must share some data with rival search engines, but the Apple Google deal is still on. Perplexity actually made an offer in the past to buy Chrome for almost 35 billion, was a unsolicited all cash offer. A lot of members of Google staff have been dropping hints that they're gonna release something big this week. Here's a semi-analysis saying, because Google is so bad at tweeting, we'll do it for them. Gemini 3 is shaping up to be an incredibly performant model, especially on coding and multimodal capabilities. So a lot of people are convinced that this release is gonna be Gemini 3, but I'll let you in on a little secret. It's not, and uh, let me show you why. This is Kath Korovec. She's saying it's a big week. She's the director of product at Google Labs Code AI, but wait, what's this? A squid? I always thought it was an octopus, not a squid, but so what is the squid? It's the Jules mascot icon, whatever you want to call it. Jules is an asynchronous coding agent by Google DeepMind. We heard announcements about it at the last Google I.O. or maybe the previous one. We haven't heard too much about it since then. I, at least I haven't, but it sounds like it's being rolled out this week. Again, these are rumors, but they're kind of strongly hinting at it. So we've seen similar things with Cloud code, and we've seen it with OpenAI's uh, Codex. So we'll see exactly how Jules fits in, how it's different, how it's similar, but this is a Google's offering. They've announced it and they have their own website, jules.google, or at least the subdomain for Jules. Uh, they have their own sort of theme and mascot. So it seems like they're building it out. So it's gonna serve some very strong purpose. We're about to find out, I'm sure. In other news, OpenAI is making some moves. Vijay Raji to become CTO of applications with the acquisition of StatSig. So OpenAI purchased StatSig for $1.1 billion in an all-stock deal, which is about 0.4% of OpenAI's shares. So Vijay was the StatSig CEO, and he's now becoming the CTO of applications for OpenAI. So he's going to be working on Codex. So Vijay will be head product engineering for ChatGPT and Codex with responsibilities that span core systems and product lines, including infrastructure and integrity. Meanwhile, Kevin Wheel at OpenAI is also tackling some new projects. He's saying, I'm starting something new inside OpenAI. It's called OpenAI for Science. And the goal is to build the next great scientific instrument, an AI-powered platform that accelerates scientific discovery. So the idea is to use AI models to accelerate scientific discovery. The, he's saying that GPT-5 was the threshold. They've been talking about this idea of accelerating scientific discovery for a while. Sam Altman said he believes that's the next big thing that's coming is integrating this into scientific discovery. Here, Kevin Wheel offers a few examples of something that GPT-5 already has been doing. Here's an example where GPT-5 Pro can improve new interesting mathematics. Here, GPT-5 outlining proofs and suggesting related extensions from a recent paper on quantum field theory. He also highlights a post by Noam Brown, where a custom model designed much improved variants of Nobel Prize winning proteins related to stem cells and many more. Here's GPT-5 working with nearly 1300 metabolites, including lipids, carbohydrates, microbiome derived compounds, 
And so as OpenAI is hiring on new people, Kevin Wheel can now pursue this OpenAI for science. They're going to be sharing more about it in the upcoming months. But if the promises are true, and again, it's not just OpenAI, it's a lot of other frontier AI labs as well, we're going to start seeing AI accelerating scientific discovery. So I can't wait to see more. Very curious to see what they're cooking up behind the scenes. Meanwhile, Ethan Malik is posting that we can say pretty definitively that AI progress is well ahead of expectations from a few years ago. In 2022, they took some experts and super forecasters and they got them to predict AI progress. So a lot of them predicted a 2.3 and 8.6 probability of an AI math Olympiad gold by 2025. So super forecasters put the chance at 2.3%. Domain experts put the chance at 86 If you've been following, not only did we get the gold, but we got in a way that's pretty impressive. As No Brown from OpenAI puts it, also these forecasts were for any AI system to get an IMO gold. The probability for a general purpose LLM doing it was considered even lower. All right, so this was asked, like, can we design some system that's specifically good at math, specifically there to crack IMO gold? There were a few out of Google DeepMind that were very impressive in the prior years, alpha geometry and alpha proof. But it wasn't even that. It was a general purpose large language model. So it wasn't even a math specific model. It was a model that could read the questions, reason about them, and come up with solutions. Also, by the way, both DeepMind and OpenAI claimed gold in International Mathematical Olympiad. Since then, we also heard rumors of other smaller models that were specifically trained like LLMs that were trained up with reinforcement learning to do well on these sort of tests that were able to do it as well. So there were some independent researchers out of UCLA that were able to get the Gemini 2.5 Pro to solve those problems with certain approaches, certain prompts. They did put it open source on GitHub, so you're able to take a look. But it sounds like something that we thought had a 2 to 8% chance of happening this year now is extremely easy because multiple companies solved it. Somebody sit making some codes and prompts that are making even other models capable of solving it. Epic AI did post something interesting about why the IMO progress isn't as exciting as it seems, or at least as I say, we didn't learn much from the IMO. Their point is that while problems one through five were very easy, the last problem is brutally hard and there's not a lot of things in between. So we're not sure exactly where AI is just because of this gap. So in other words, these models are still not cracking the brutally hard problems, but there were a few humans that did. In other news, there's this kind of weird article. OpenAI thinks its critics are funded by billionaires. Now it's going after them. So there's a couple of ongoing lawsuits that are related to XAI and OpenAI. Recently, one of the XAI employees seems like they stole some technology from XAI and potentially are taking it to OpenAI, could be. So XAI is suing that employee to try to block them from joining OpenAI. Now it seems like OpenAI is fighting back so as this news article says, Calvin joined this company called Encode. And Encode filed an amicus brief supporting some of Musk's arguments. So this is the Musk versus OpenAI lawsuit that is trying to prevent OpenAI from going for profit. Seems like OpenAI lawyers subpoenaed Calvin to see if he was ever paid by Elon Musk. So as you can see here, Encode backs legal challenges to OpenAI's for-profit switch. This is from December 30th, 2024. And he wasn't the only one to receive a subpoena from OpenAI. Seems like there's been other ones that served to at least two other AI governance groups in recent months. And it was part of OpenAI's emerging attack on what it believes is a billionaire-backed conspiracy to halt its progress. OpenAI lawyers allege that groups opposed to its conversion for a for-profit company may be funded by Musk or are working with Zuckerberg. In media interviews, representatives for an OpenAI-affiliated super PAC have described a vast force working to slow down AI progress and steal American jobs. So basically, OpenAI, or their legal team, 
is trying to see if any of these AI governance companies that keep popping up, do any of the major stockholders of competing AI labs, is there any money being funneled through them to these companies? And to be fair, there are a lot of these companies that are part of the AI existential risk ecosystem. Here's that entire picture. This is Dr. Techlash, great follow if you're kind of interested in this stuff. And she just kind of keeps an eye on all the AI doomsday machine articles and companies that are coming out. So this is the AI existential risk industrial complex, right? All these companies somehow involved in pushing AI governance. She points out all these people that are saying that basically this will 100% lead to human extinction. She also has a map of AI existential safety, pointing out all the companies and influencers online, some of whom we know. But it seems like the idea here is that open philanthropy is the largest funder in this existential risk space. And a lot of the other companies are just smaller companies funded by it. So we have the Long Term Future Fund, Future of Life Institute, Manny Fund, AI 2050. Like a lot of these names we've seen before in one way or another the Future of Life Institute. Now, I'm not saying that this is true or false, but there does seem to be some funding for a lot of these groups, which of course isn't necessarily anything nefarious, right? Some people, if they're concerned about the future of humanity and they put their money towards those causes, there's nothing wrong with that. And so Calvin, who's part of ENCODE, so ENCODE says they are, a youth-led organization advocating for responsible artificial intelligence development. So they kind of stepped out against OpenAI and them trying to go in the for-profit direction. So he was the one that got subpoenaed. So groups like Calvin's say that the company is bending reality to claim that all criticism of the world's most powerful AI company is part of a billionaire-backed cabal of commercial interests and that grassroots groups like theirs are getting caught in the middle. They're kind of this paranoid bubble. So he's talking about open AI. They seem to have a hard time believing we are an organization of people who just like actually care about this. Now, open AI is especially suspicious of Canny, the group behind the bill to block its for-profit transition. They subpoenaed the Canny's president, Jeffrey Gardner. Now, Jeffrey Gardner, you know, some of the things about him are indeed odd, as the newspaper says. He's a self-employed attorney and LSAT instructor living in New York. He has no record of having engaged with California officials or any public officials anywhere on any political issue at all. In every sense, he's a strange choice to lead an active AI advocacy group. But further raising opening eye suspicions, the fact that he rents a home owned by an entity called Tesla Place LLC. So open AI lawyers believe that he's being used as a prop for whoever's controlling this. And that's to hide the true identity of the officers and funders of this company. So this is from the San Francisco Standard, and this article gets nutty. I think we're going to have to do a separate video where we look at Dr. Techlash, some of her arguments at what uh, this thing alleges. But let me know what you think. Is there a billionaire conspiracy, whether it's uh, Musk and Mark Zuckerberg or, or somebody else? Does it seem strange to you that there are dozens and dozens of these AI advocacy groups that are seem kind of mysterious, like it's not quite clear who's behind them, but this thing gets kind of nuts anyway. So I'll probably do a separate video because there's a lot of interesting stuff here that's happening behind the scenes. And it does seem like the competition between all the labs is really heating up. Anyways, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth and I'll see you in the next one.